order was originally formed as a means to go hand in hand and fight against the half-breeds. Humanity was uh, at the time at war with the half-breeds and they had a hard time surviving. The half-breeds were fewer, but they were definitely more powerful. At this point in the story, the Order has realized that in order for them to finally win the battle over the half-breeds, they have to commission the best weapon makers that are in the world to make the things that they need to fight whatever it was that they were coming up against. And that war that remains the status quo for the better part of, like, you know, a, a thousand years suddenly changes with the Industrial Revolution because now, that equilibrium is changed by machinery and inventions. We started looking at what are the things that we think are interesting to propel something, to weaponize something. It took a lot of iteration to get something that looked, had the craftsmanship of the period, but also you had this alternate technology that you had to integrate into just the basic assault rifle. There's definitely prototype weaponry at that time where some of the guns makers were, were developing uh, automatic weapons out of their semi-automatic weapons. So we thought a rifle that was fully automatic was something that they would have figured out Designing, you know, the knight's kind of a bread and butter, which is the, the combo rifle. That was kind of the challenge of, you know, just looking at all the issued rifles through all the ages and in Industrial Revolution up to World War II and trying to pick the tone of, of what we wanted to hit. So we attempted to make a Victorian version of the AK-47 plus this kind of alternate fire. At the time, they had originally called it, there was something called a combo gun, but it was a rifle shotgun setup, so we kind of took the name, leaving the form factor of the kind of master key setup and changing the shotgun out for something that delivered kind of like a concussive blast. There's plenty of conventional weaponry that feels like it fits in in that era, but then there's a little more kind of prototype weapons that are definitely kind of pushed in terms of what was available in the time. For years, I, I've been watching videos like online of, you know, thermites, this cool thing, and, you know, people don't really know much about it, but you ignite this aluminum oxide powder, and it turns into this big, like, sparking, you know, thing that can weld, it can cut. That's exciting. Let's figure out how to make that. The kind of spits out projectile thermite pellets that you can spray anywhere, and then you take a high temperature flare throw it into that cloud, and then it ignites everything. You could do it in that order, but what if you were to actually fire the flare first, set that up, and then spray the thermite after? It's got multiple different ways that you could play it. That's interesting. So we just kind of kept on going down that path of figuring out what things that maybe, you know, don't get a lot of exploration in other games for weapon ideas. We wanted to make sure nothing felt uh, contrived. So we went to a, a meticulous level of research and, and trying to find, as we're putting together these slightly fantastical devices, how we can make them feel grounded in the technology of the era. We were looking at Edison and Tesla, and so we said, okay, well, electricity has got to be something that we play with. Everything's being electrified at the time period, so let's let's put that in one camp. We've actually used Tesla as one of our main uh, points of contact in the game. He provides weaponry, he provides devices that he invents, and they are sometimes based on actual real things that he's done. Because he's kind of like, in our game, a little bit of a makeshift kind of MacGyver, you know, he's crafty. He doesn't necessarily put things together in the most beautiful way, but for him it makes sense. You never cease to amaze, Nicola. So we said, okay, maybe he took these leftover parts from a rifle, the forestock, and he just started whittling and cutting it down and adding some other pieces to it. Even though they're, they're gadgets of weapons that didn't exist in that time period, they're made from components and ideas and research that were available then. Especially the arc gun, when it kind of unfurls and starts charging up. And we thought, okay, well, it's kind of cool if maybe it spins up, generates electricity, and that thing then kind of stores itself along a Jacob's Ladder-like apparatus that is also the aiming part of the weapon. And then that thing finds its way kind of arcing towards its target. And when it hits, it delivers, you know, so much energy that whatever it hits, pretty much it atomizes and blows it up. People were developing these gadgets at, you know, a breakneck pace and not really considering kind of the safety of the user. We wanted to make, make it feel like it's sort of on the edge of what is uh, safe to wield. Especially some of the prototype weapons where part of the allure to the, of them to us was that thing looks kind of unstable. That looks just as dangerous to the operator as it does to whoever's on the receiving end, you know? So that's kind of some of the fun of the weapons. While they don't necessarily look comical, we try to always make them look, like I said, you know, realistic and classy, that there's an element of kind of danger in some of them. They actually feel a little bit on the edge. This is for the players.